Atlanta and Philly, and her name was Brown Sugar. See, we be making love constantly, that's why my eyes are a shade. Blood burgundy, the way that we kiss is unlike any other way that I be kissing when I'm kissing. What I miss, won't you listen? Brown Sugar, babe, I guess high off your love, I don't know how to be. Hey guys, so welcome back to Lex Reads. So in today's reading vlog, I am doing an author where I have read one, two, I think this would be my third book by her. And when I tell you she is one of my favorites, and that is Diane McKinney Weststone, Tempest Rising. Now, the funny thing about this book is y'all know I'm in the middle of reading Invisible Man by Ralph Ellison and it looked like in the beginning I was trying to get into a reading slump because that book is beyond deep and extremely intellectual and sometimes just like what is she talking about bruh but I'm getting through it and now I'm understanding it right but I said you know what let me read something in conjunction with that so I won't go down that rabbit hole of getting that reading slump and I picked this up this book is Diane McKinney's Weststone's second uh, novel. Now, her first novel is, what, Tumbling, which I have not read, and that's on my 2024 TBR list. But this book is about a married couple, Clarissa and Finch. Finch becomes, like, this well-known, well-accomplished caterer, right? And this is in the uh, 60s. And his catering business basically dwindles down and he goes missing and he dies and because he dies his wife is so distraught that she just cannot take living anymore and she goes into an institution but they have three young girls bliss who is the youngest victoria who is the middle child and i think sheen is the oldest and the oldest is what 13 so it ranges their ages range from like 9 to like 13 or something like that right but they're well-rounded children because the fact that their dad was like i said like a well-established uh man and had money they are used to like lavish things okay and used to going to private schools having the best you know clothing exposure all of that you know and because their mom is in the institution now, they have to go, instead of living with their aunts, they go to a foster um, home and currently is living with a woman named May and a horrible woman named Ramona. Um, Ramona and May, they're, you know, mother and daughter. And Ramona is unbelievably mean, but beautiful. She looks like, like a Beyonce, okay? But she's like a Beyonce with a bad attitude. And, I mean, horrible. And she don't like them girls. And her mom is used to having foster children because to get money, clearly. Her mom is like a numbers runner too. And she realized I can, you know, obviously keep everything going, my mortgage going if I have foster children. So Ramona has basically grew up with foster children. She's in her mid-20s. Um, but she really hates these children because of where they come from. And then these kids, they, <laughs> especially the youngest one, Bliss, Bliss gets you all the way together. And she's like nine years old and girl got a mouth like nobody's business. And Shane's the oldest one and she, you know, has this mysterious eyes and she don't play too. Victoria's the one that's very mild, very simple, very plain looking. And she's tries to keep the peace between her sisters you know um but right now i'm in the middle where they just you know got there and they're just trying to get acclimated with everything and it's just it's horrible but it looks like you're also diane is also going to explore ramona and may's relationship and why ramona is the way she is and that mean spirit i mean just horrible okay and yeah so i haven't got to that part yet but when I tell you, I, I think I've done, I've done two vlogs, uh, from Diane McKinney West. I remember the first vlog I did is when I first started my channel, it was the first reading vlog and it was blues dancing and I absolutely loved it. And so like the next year I said, well, let me put her on my list again. I, and I read, um, leaving to Seal street and loved that too. Also did a reading vlog and now this one. And when I tell you all of her books, are different characters are so different from blues dancing and also living to sell street and 
oh, I just, that's the beauty of a good writer. Because it's like the fact that she can tell different stories and you're not like, oh, girl, that sound like, you know, such and such in that book. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. Um, and all her books are set in Philadelphia because she is from Philadelphia. Y'all, I just can't wait to get even more deep into this book. And then I love her covers. This cover is so pretty. And this book came out in 2000 and... No, girl. 1998. <laughs> yeah. Um, Diane McKinney Weston's running years and years and has so many books. And she's not an author that is just displayed um, as she should be. But I always say that the Hidden Gem books are the best books. And they are. And another thing that she does well is her secondary characters are just as well written as her main characters and main protagonists you just want to know everything about every character i mean i can go on and on about Diane mckinney west on y'all see i'm fangirling just amazing i'm not even done with this book and i would recommend y'all pick this up now i'm just like my heart goes to them girls because they have just lost their dad their mom is you know in an institution and they're just thrown to the wolves and then they're not used to living like a little modest life. So they got to get used to that. And I just can't wait to see the outcome of it. But yeah, guys, that is what we are reading for this reading vlog. And let me go because I got to go to work. So you guys, I have to go to the store because, oh, I didn't want to go out today. Lord, um, I went out earlier to do my 30 minute walk, but I want some greens and of course I don't want to do I don't want to pick no greens or anything like that and so I was just gonna have like the blurry greens in the can but my what do you call it what is this can opener is so freaking cheap where it won't open so I'm like should I I think I might just get like a little can of this because it will not open I got this from like the dollar store girl it won't twist okay i'm gonna have to get a can opener another can opener that's what i have to do i did not feel like going out but i want these greens i've been craving greens for the past like what two days and i actually make real food i'm about to make me some rice uh and these greens <sighs> yeah i gotta go to the store Okay, guys, I got the small can of Glory Greens, but I am going to have to get another uh, can opener, not like a cheap one, because I literally got that from the dollar store. So, yeah, and usually when I do greens, I actually, I never do the cans. I'll, like, do the real ones, but I don't feel like doing that, y'all. I just get to a point where... <laughs> I don't feel like doing it and I mean you know you can doctor these up a little bit and they sometimes taste like the real ones or well, they don't but you know what I mean Okay, guys, so I wanted to read you this passage of, you remember what I told you earlier this morning, where I just got to the part where the girls, three girls, they just went to May's house. And May right now, May right now, she's not there. So Ramona's is just there. And Ramona's like, girl, the devil. <laughs> but this scene, oh my goodness. So it says, come on, Tori, don't cry. Bliss wrapped her arms around Victoria's neck. And you don't have to take up for me. I know that's what you are getting ready to do. But mommy did always tell us not to stuff our hats in our coat pockets. And I'm not going against what mommy says for anybody. She rolled her eyes at Ramona and then pulled her coat off her shoulders. Furthermore, Bl furthermore, Bliss directed her words to Ramona again. My Aunt Till and, and Aunt Ness and Uncle Blue and Uncle Snow are coming for us anyhow. Aunt Till doesn't play, especially when it comes to me and my sisters, Bliss continued to pout. And Bliss is about eight or nine years old, okay? Furthermore, the judge fixed it so none of your strange A people can try to connect with you. So they threw like Aunt Till in jail. She's not in there now. But, um... Aunt Till's like nothing to play with. And I think she like cut somebody's head open or something. But they don't want her, uh, clearly, they don't want the kids to go to their aunt's house. Um, they obviously wanted, the system wants them to be in 
May's, you know, custody. Um, and it looks like May maybe has like an agreement with some people. So, you know, and again, May wants those kids for money. I meant to read you guys the passage before, like the coat situation. So this is why Bliss went off a little bit about her coat. It says, put your hats in your pocket, Ramona said, as she watched the older to pull their hats from their heads. Odd looking hats. She never seen a cross stitch like that all mixed up with no no particular pattern, but it worked well in the hats. Now she was looking at their hair. Darn. <laughs> she muttered under her breath. It was as thick as it looked in the photo. My mother told us to put our hats in our sleeves so our pockets won't stretch out of shape. It was Bliss talking and looking up at Ramona like she was nobody she had to listen to. Ramona looked at Bliss standing back on her heels. Your mother's in the crazy house, so what does she know? But then she heard May's voice in her head telling her to mind her meanness. She did stoop to Bliss eye level though. I don't care where you stick them as long as I don't see them all over the closet floor. She pulled Bliss's hat from her head. Don't this go in your sleeve? She emphasized the sleeve and then shoved the hat in Bliss's hand. She noticed Bliss's hair was light brown and not as thick as her sister's. She would have to be the one with the soft hair, she thought. The one I must like to slip and catch with the hot comb right around, right around the tips of her ear. <laughs> there was her meanness again. She clenched her fist tighter, trying to hold it in. I mean, that girl is just so mean where she she knows that she's mean but as you can see bliss that little nine-year-old girl something else trying to get you know squared away just in their new life and at school and because they come from the family they you know come from at school they're kind of like people talk about them behind their back and then they feel sorry for them knowing that their dad is dead and their mom is like in you know a mental institution but the girls asked her um if she can go to the library and she on some bull crap again something that simple okay claire that she and her sisters were going to the library are you asking me or telling me ramona snap she means can we go peacemaking victoria no ramona that's what you meant can we i mean is it okay if we go to the library I want her to ask me. Ramona made herself peer into Sharon's eyes. I want her to ask me, Ramona said again, anger seeping into her words. Ask me, don't tell me. She had her hands on her hips now. When I tell you like these little interactions, I'm loving because you can literally see those girls, you know, trying to talk to Ramona. And I mean, it's so, something simple. They just want to go to the library, girl and she just on some bull crap but yeah and then uh ramona has a little he's a boyfriend but it looked like he liked her more than she liked him because really ramona doesn't like him she likes his daddy she's like infatuated with his daddy right and i don't think he knows that um and what's that man's name tyrone that's his name but the girls get back home and they kind of like him. He and they kind of like him and he likes the girls too. Um <laughs> but bliss, oh lord, she gets me. Why you want to be with Ramona? She asked. She's all mean and two-faced. You too nice for her. Shane looked down at her fingernails for once. She was glad to hear one of Bliss' inappropriate comments. Wait a minute, you're not being fair, Bliss, Tyrone said. Ramona's sweet. Victoria moaned when he said that. Well, she is in her own way when you get to know her. Y'all just haven't been here long enough to see her good side. She got a real sweetness about her. She could be a little, you know, a little snippy sometimes. Sometimes, Bliss said. Try it every time she breathes. Or maybe we're just missing her good side when she blink. Shane looked directly at Tyrone when she said that. Victoria made a sound that was half that was half laughter, half grunt. And I am loving that little girl Bliss. She is like too grown for her own good. But out of the three of them, she is the one that like really talks for them. And obviously the oldest one. And Victoria like, girl, she's just trying to make the peace, okay? Because her thing is, look, we already suffering, so... Let's just try to get it together. Thinking they might just be there not a long time. It's like a, you know, a temporary situation. So that's what they're thinking. And I, I don't know um, if it's true or not, but 
Diane writing is just it's it's fantastic so yeah uh <laughs> I just I love the girls interaction I, when they come on the page I'm like so excited because I just I love all three of them they are, all three are different I need to clean up this room but I'm not doing that because it's like 10 o'clock and I just had to do my hair I like washed it I today was Tuesday so I went back to work so I like it was all frizzy and stuff I didn't like the way it looked and it was dirty so I had to wash it and I wanted to see how it looked with the clip-ins um because lately the back has been really frizzy and it hasn't been matching so I had to make sure I really really straightened it this time but it's yeah I'm not cleaning this up the good thing is instead of having to be to work at 11 a.m tomorrow after the work i have to be to work at nine but that means i get to leave at three as opposed to five since i'm getting there early so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna obviously come home after work like rest a little bit and then clean this up because when i tell you y'all it's look at a mess um like uh it's yeah it, it's a mess so i'm gonna have to get that together but yeah, I'm gonna wrap this hair up, pin curl it, and then go to sleep because I'm tired and I have to wake up at at least 6.30 as opposed to 8 o'clock. Um, so, yeah. I want to show you guys what I got at Barnes and Noble. So they're having this 50% um, off hardcover books, but they're like selected hardcover books. So not every hardcover book in the store is 50% off. The two bucks I wanted were on the 50% off like this. So girl. So the first one I got was, is it Mame by Jessica George? And I really wanted this book when it like first came out and y'all know. I'm cheap, so I didn't want to pay the $27 or $28 plus tax. So I'm like, I'll just wait till it goes on, you know, paperback. And didn't have to wait because it was 50% off. So instead of paying $28, I paid like $14. And then the next one, which I was looking at this too when it came out and then forgot about it. And then when I saw that it was on that table, I'm like, I have to get it. So it's Daughters of, is it Madara by... Oh my goodness, okay. Is it Rajari Vallard? I'm trying to see, how do you say this? Wait, wait, let me see. Isn't this a, what do you call it? A, is it a, a city in India? Look, I know a little bit uh, from reading my um, Sabina Khan YA books. Yeah, it's a major city in India, okay. The Daughters of Madurai by Raja Rivariar. Okay. Madurai. That's how you say it. Huh. And this, it's about a young woman. She's married. She's, um, I believe, obviously in India. And, like, girls are kind of like a curse. And her major thing is for, and her major thing is she needs to have a boy. And I think the last baby that she has is a girl and they literally snatch it out of her arms and she never sees her daughter again. And then it jumps from 92 to 2019. And I guess the girl that was given away, um, she goes back to India because her grandfather is ill, it says. Um, and it looks like some secrets and things like that come out. So, and this is a debut novel by this author. And first of all, the cover is just so pretty. Look at the deco edges. Isn't that pretty? Lastly, I got this book from the uh, romance section. It's called, F is it Fumbled by Alexa, uh, by Alexa Martin. Now, I think there, there there's like series of this, uh, cause this is like the second book in the series. But I think you can read the books like standalone. Um, let me again see what the series name is. It's called, okay, the the playbook. Yeah, the playbook series. And there is four. 
yeah because the last one came out in 2020 but like i said you can read them as standalones so i wanted to get this one because it looked like it was up my alley so a single uh mother named poppy she got pregnant when she was 16 and she ended up like leaving and uprooting like her whole life including her boyfriend tk moore um and he is like and they say he's in the nfl y'all know he go to like parties and got women and stuff like that and they they like cross paths like years later clearly like you know relationship blossoms this would be a book this would be a perfect book for me to read like on my day off um since it is like real fun and it's not really serious you know it's a romance and this is only like 300 and some pages and usually romances i can like read them like that because again the pace it's more chill as opposed to, you know, like something like this with some drama. But, and I don't think there's anything else that I wanted on that 50% off table. Um, no, I think, yeah, I got everything I wanted. This wasn't 50%, obviously, because it's paperback. This was uh, $15, uh, dollars, but yeah, that's my little mini book haul. Okay, guys, so I actually finished the book this morning. It's like eight this morning um and i literally had like three pages to go <laughs> i was trying to finish it last night but i was just like too sleepy but i would say i would give it a solid four stars four stars and first of all the ending you did get you got closure okay so yeah and it it ended i would say the way you wanted it to end um yeah, because clearly I'm like trying to not give it away, obviously, because this book is it's great. It honestly is with me. I think with books, I like like the end to be like a nice, neat bow sometimes. And that's, <laughs> you know, with stories and, you know, especially realistic fiction. A lot of times it can't end like that because it's realistic. Sometimes it's, you know, in life, things are not like a nice, neat bow. OK, but they're tolerable. And that's one thing that I do like about Diane McKinney Weststone's works are the fact that, you know, they're based on, you know, it's like real life, something, the things that she write about that can easily happen to a person. Um, and it's not, again, like I said, tied into a nice neat bow, but it is tolerable. And for that situation, you know, with Clarissa, you know, losing her husband and, really having a mental breakdown and having to go into the institution and was not able to take care of her three young girls. I mean, girl, you know, you know, when you think about that, how was that going to end in a nice, neat bow? But the way she crafted it, it was just, it was perfect. It honestly was. I would highly recommend you guys read it. Like highly recommend you guys read it. This is my third book by her. And I mean, it's, Every time I read a book by her, I'm more and more impressed. And she, again, like I stated in the beginning of the vlog, where all her books are different and it's like not the same character in different settings. So the last book I read by her, which is three months ago, was Leaving to Sill Street. It was nothing like Tempest Rising. The characters are nothing like, you know, those characters and vice versa. And I mean, yeah. And the fact that that was her second book, Tempest Rising was her second book. I mean, yeah, now it's like, I really want to read Tumbling. I mean, Tumbling's on my TBR for next year and I'm trying to hold out, <laughs> but yeah. Oh Lord, that's my coffee. I know Lazarado is another book that I want to get by her that I do not have. She's almost like, I want to go through her whole catalog and, and read her books. Just like uh, Donna Hill, even though Donna Hill got, girl, Donna Hill got like over 30 books or something like that. I'm like, girl, mm. but <laughs> I can take, Diane McKinney Weststone uh, catalog, but I know the next book after Tumbling that I want to read by her is Lazarado. I think that's how you say it. And that is, I believe it's the theme of slavery aspects. Um, so yeah. And the reason why I got into Diane McKinney Weststone actually is you guys know, um, Sadiqa Johnson, I wrote The Yellow Wife and uh, the, her newest book, House of Eve. They're both from Philadelphia. And I remember while she was doing her um, research for Yellow Wife, she said she read uh, Lazarado. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, clearly both of those books are about slavery. And you know how much I rant and rave about 
yellow wife and secret johnson i am like a huge fan so it's like when she mentioned her name and i was like i have a couple of books by her let me read it and girl so glad i did because diamond kenny weston's writing is just it's unbelievable and the, the fact that she does not get all the praise and recognition as she should just it floors me but i would say if you guys have not read a diamond kenny weston book please please read one okay though so far i've read blues dancing uh leaving cecile street and uh tempest rising i would say yeah all all, all four to five stars so yeah guys that's all i have for this reading vlog and i'll be back with more black books bye